So we're looking at the vocabulary in Unit 19. First word is iskunamai. Uh, um, it's it's uh, uh, one of these deponents in which the there is no aorist. Okay, has a has a contract feature iskunumai. There is no aorist middle. The aorist passive functions as its aorist. So iskunthain is what the book calls a passive deponent. Okay, so iskunthain doesn't mean to be be ashamed, it's not passive in meaning, it's aorist. Um, and the form of the future eskumai is given in the vocabulary notes, but it means to be ashamed or to feel shame before, an important uh, feature of this culture, expression of shame, okay? Um, next word is apolume, a compound of an older verb alume with apa, okay? Uh, it has a contract feature apolo, and then it has two aorists, one, the first aorist, apolesa, that takes a direct object, and another, apolamein, that's in second aorist and middle, and that is intransitive. Then there are two perfects, apololeka, which is transitive, and apolola, which is intransitive. So what does this word mean? When it's transitive, it means kill or lose. When it's middle um, and it's intransitive, it means... Um, sorry about the blackout there. Um, the what we were talking about is that this this verbs principal parts have double forms for apparently the same function, but they divide them up in to transitive and intransitive uses, and the transitive uses is, is kill or lose, okay, and the intransitive uses is, is die or cease to exist, as the book puts it. Die is enough. Okay, perish is another translation of it. Um, and then we get the weirdest thing of all, a verb that has no first principal part. <laughs> it did have one once, but they've, it's been eliminated from classical Greek, so we don't get it listed. So it's the verb whose feature is eresomai, whose aorist is a second aorist, eramein. And then it has a, uh, they also give you the, the verb derived from it, again, without a present, aneresomai and aneramein, both of which mean ask. So this is an old root verb whose present form has essentially disappeared from the language. Uh, the next verb is heurisco, with, uh, uh, which means to find or discover. Um, the perfect of it is a famous thing. Uh, notice that this, the verb, the book gives us the aorist as heuron with an eta, he, and the, air, the perfect as heureka with an eta upsilon. The perfect middle is heuremai, and the aorist passive is heurethane with an eta. In almost every manuscript of Greek that we have, whenever you have heu, they also, you also see a form with an epsilon. So it's not totally clear that Greeks ever said heu. Mm -hmm. They probably all got simplified to heu. So, you know, I learned the principal parts of this verb as heurisco, heuresu, heuron with an epsilon. Heureka is what uh, Archimedes said when he discovered his principle. In other words, this guy was the English word. Eureka. Yeah, not Eureka, but Eureka. <laughs> <laughs> so the Zionians he, he didn't have an H, I guess. Okay, so uh, that's, that's a cool word to know. Heos is one of the two words for as long as or while or until, the other being mekri, um, syntax we talked about. There's the contract verb hegeomai, um, uh, epsilon contract, whose feature is hegesomai, aorist hegesomain. Uh, no perfect because it's perfect middle because it's already middle. Um, and then and no perfect active because it's already middle. And then the perfect hegemai and hegethane, the aorist passive, which is relatively rare. Um, it tells you that it means two things lead. Lead the way. I don't know where the way comes from, but it means lead, or I guess maybe it's lead the way, or, or be command, be a commander or rule. Okay, the English word um, hegemony comes from a Greek word derived from it. Hegemai gives you a noun hegemon, which means a leader or a ruler. So hegemony is hegemonia, um, comes from this, and so it has to do with leading and ruling. And and in the sense of leading or being in charge, it governs a genitive direct object like archo when it means rule or command. Um, but this verb also means believe um, or think. Just think is fine, okay? And like namidzo, it's not clear how come 
these verbs get the meaning think. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, the book has an explanation that's more like finessing it. But let's be straight about it. There is a there's one explanation that comes close to making sense that I know of, but it just doesn't really cut it. So anyhow, if anybody has any ideas, it would be interesting. Um, next we've got the adjective esos, ise, ison. Nothing remarkable about its form. Um, e means equal, fair, um, or flat. Okay, uh, it says. Uh, it means flat in the sense of something that uh, 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 something that's level without bumps in it. Okay, mm -hmm. and in that sense, it's been equaled out or leveled out. Okay. Um, it. it, it um, it doesn't necessarily, you also use it for, um, there, there's a place, it has another funny wrinkle to it. So you can say, you can say, um, everybody got a, a, a share that's ESOS. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean they got the same size share. So it means their fair share as opposed to right. an equal share. We, I think we have equal is, a, is mathematically exact. Mm -hmm. But fair is more like what ESOS means, okay? Mm -hmm. A share that's appropriate to them. So isonomia is a Greek political term, means uh, people having uh, equal or fair ability to con to govern themselves, okay? Mm -hmm. doesn't mean everyone has the same right to govern themselves. Okay, kainos, kaine, kainon is a word that means strange or new in a scary way. Okay, neos can be scary, but it's not marked as such. Okay, so so new and, and creepy way. All right, then there's the verb, the noun kerdos, another second, third declension, neuter noun that's not a second declension masculine one. Kerdos, kerdus, ta means profit. It's a bad word for Greeks. It's associated with commerce and money, gain, trans, filthy lucre. It's not, Greek has negative uh, uh, associations with words that have to do with making mon money out of, out of what you do. All right, the next uh, word is this great verb, krino, gives you the principal parts. Again, this is a verb whose stem ends with a new, so you're going to have funny things happening with it. Um, you got a, a contract future krino. You have a, an S A aorist without an S, ekrina, because ekrinsa becomes ekrinsa with a, you know, becomes ekrina, the S disappears and the I is already long. Mm -hmm. You've got kekrika, kekrimai, there the root, and ekrithe is the is has no new. The new is a, an artifact of the of the perfect imperfective aspect. It shouldn't even be in the aorist. Um, but you can see that form in crisis, for example, which comes from this root. And it tells you that it means separate, decide, or judge. Um, and I, I think you can understand that combination of things if you think that what, what it really means is to discriminate between things. Okay? So if you, if you can separate things, you can distinguish them, and therefore you can judge them. Um, but but it, it can also just mean separate out two groups without the judging part. So that's an important part of its function. Then there's the most important compound of this is apocrinomai, a dependent verb that means respond to. There's also hupakrinomai, which gives us hypocrisy, and um, another and hupokrites, which means uh, an actor in the theater. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's an important thing. Anyhow, more about that some other time. There's also the noun krites, which just means a person who judges, which is, or a person who distinguishes things, who's a judge. So they're giving you that as well. There's the, the noun lupe, lupes, which we had way back at the beginning in a reading exercise. That means pain, physical pain, and mental pain. I think it means both. So it's grief or pain. We talked about mekri. It's the same as has the same meaning as heos, and there's any discernible difference between them. Then we get nosos, nosu, he, uh, a noun of the second declension that looks masculine but is feminine, right? We also have nesos that's feminine and hados. Um, this is nosos, and it means sickness or disease. 
the 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 ultimate nosos for Greeks. Well, there are lots of them, but the, when Greeks think of sickness or disease, they think of malaria. Yuck. When we think of it, what do we think of cancer, right? Okay, uh, next one is oida, which we spent a lot of time on the forms of it. It gives you the future of it, which we didn't even talk about at all, which is asami, because the regular future. Notice that it's a middle future, okay? Um, but one thing that it does teach you is a, co a compound verb, sun oida, <coughs> which it tells you governs a dative, but it governs uh, a dative of the reflexive pronoun. Okay, so in the in the uh, vocabulary notes, they give you the standard sentence with sonoida, which is sonoida emote tein pollen so sase. So this verb means to be aware of, and it governs an object, uh, a reflexive object in the dative case. I, this is a woman, woman speaking, I am aware of myself, and then it takes a supplementary participle. I am aware of myself saving the city-state. Okay? Um, a very strange kind of expression, but a really typically Greek one. Right? I, I know that I saved the city-state, is what, what you're saying. Point, right? And they put the adjective oligos, oligia, oligon, in the, in the vocabulary, which means little or few in the plural. Um, but then we had the comparative and the superlative, a lot tone and a lot We have talked about prin with infinitive that means before, or with the indicative, indicative, or with on the subjunctive that means until. There's proteros and husteros, adjectives that mean respectively former, and uh, or and superior or before. That's proteros and husteros, which means later. They give you the adverb from each, proteron, before or early, and husteron is later the adverb. And then there's the superlative of husteros. There isn't a superlative of proteron. Well, there is, I guess. That's protos, but the superlative of husteros is, is last. And the superlative of proteros is protos, which is first, right? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Chronos, the word for time, okay? Um, so, what's the vocabulary in this lesson? Yeah, that is a chi. <laughs> okay. That is a chi, yes. And there's also another word for time, which is kairos, mm -hmm. which means a particular time, a moment in time, a critical time, mm -hmm. right? Whereas chronos is an abstraction, relatively speaking. Okay. 